Hi, Nikonians and other um, interested parties. Speaking of parties, I'm a bit late to this one. I've been otherwise engaged, as I'll tell you later. But here's my take on the latest major update, a big jump that took us from 3.10 to 4.0 for the Nikon Z9 camera. Hi, Ray here. There's a lot to unpack in this update, but already it's clear that the most talked about feature in this update is auto capture for both photos and video. Quite simply, the camera can be set to react via a series of settings to automatically record video or shoot photos. The settings or capture criteria are accessed via a new addition to video or photo menus. First of all, you can modify and name up to five user presets which you can set up and name according to your needs. After pressing the start button, <laughs> and it took me a while to figure out that was how you access the settings, you can modify parameters that trigger auto capture. So you can trigger using motion detection, and you can set the near and far distance of the desired subject. You can use these alone or in combination, toggling on and off with either the OK button or the touchscreen, if you have that enabled. The speed criteria we access via the OK button and adjust using the front and rear command dials so we can input the speed, how fast we want auto capture to react, and size of the subject that we want to target. Select your subject type as usual from humans or animals, what have you. And we can also tell the camera what direction the subject will enter the frame. Um, in other words, we tell the camera what direction to expect the subject to be moving in. Incidentally, the plus, minus, and I menu buttons are used to navigate the menus. We can set the time to shoot after recording is triggered from one second up to 30 minutes and the interval afterwards until the camera resumes shooting again from one second to 30 minutes. Now the next setting is excellent, target area. The camera has to be in auto area mode, then by just um, kind of finger painting on the screen, you can control which area of the frame uh, responds and which areas ignore action. So for instance, um, say you had some irrelevant area of movement that might trigger the camera, say some moving trees or something like that. By simply tapping that area on the screen, you can deactivate the offending focusing points. So the camera reacts just in the remaining area. A custom target map designed specifically for the subject. Use the plus or minus buttons to start with either zero or um, complete focus point deactivation and customize away. That's pretty cool. As an example, I could um, create a custom preset to use for my talking head videos in the studio here. Usually I manually start the cameras and, and I still have to start B cameras, etc. <laughs> until Nikon adds this to the Z8. And I hear a rumor this feature will come to the Z8. I hope so. But yeah, I can use a combination of these settings for video. For this uh, relatively simple preset, I'd uh, set the direction I enter the frame from the left, the minimum and maximum distance that I generally move in, and so on. Not that anything else moves much uh, in the periphery while I'm doing these videos, but I can make sure the camera only reacts to the area that I sit in here. Of course, auto capture will be welcomed with open arms or eyes by wildlife and sports photographers. There are already, I think, videos by photographers like Morton Hilmer demonstrating how this feature can be used to set up shots in the field and forest. My initial experiments have been closer to home here well, I don't have quite the uh, acreage that Morton does, but it, it works quite well. This is, after all, a great alternative to the kind of expensive auto trigger systems that we used to rely on, now built right in to the Z9. In situations where you want to keep your distance from skittish creatures and um, or set one camera up with auto capture while free ranging, I guess you'd say, with another camera, this addition has you covered or um, has you covering more of the action. Again, that's a whole lot of parameters you can use to target your subject in just about any set of circumstances. There are lots of other new additions in Firmware 4, some that I'll use and others that I'll 
probably forget about after this video. The length of time the camera will continue to buffer frames before cancelling, shooting, during pre-release capture phase of high speed frame capture has been increased from 30 to 300 seconds. That's like five minutes. Low ISO sensitivity options have been added to ISO sensitivity settings, ISO sensitivity mode M for use during N-log video recording. And this is a handy feature that I may use from time to time as it indicates this enables the use of lower than the default ISO 800 when recording video log footage. For instance, I could have used it recently when I was shooting in bright sunlight while trying to maintain an aperture of f1.2 <laughs> with the Z85mm f1.2 lens. Even with nine stops of neutral density, I couldn't keep the aperture to less than 2.8, unless I wanted to bump up the shutter speed. So a rare issue for me since I always travel with lots of ND filters, unless I forget them but a welcome addition nonetheless. We have a wider range of speeds available for high res zoom and slow motion video recording outside of the you know, usual 60 or 120 FPS, etc. Of particular interest to me, improved accuracy of 3D tracking for small, fast moving subjects when auto, like people, animal, vehicle, is uh, chosen for AF subject detection options and no subject of the selected type is detected. And once again, in this update, further improvement to focus accuracy for dark low contrast subjects and other improvements to the autofocus operation and its reliability. Not that I personally have any complaints so far. Whatever those improvements may be, I'm happy to accept them. We can now assign via custom settings F2, custom controls, shooting, and G2, custom controls, to switch eyes used to switch focus between the subject's left and right eyes. Actually, I've already assigned function button one and I'm finding that quite useful. Firmware four added focus distance information to the focus distance indicator displayed during focus. So we have this info now on the display, whereas before we only enjoyed that with um, lenses like the Z70-200 f2.8 VRS that include the little OLED info window on the lens. We have new camera electronic shutter sounds to fill in for the Z9's non-existent shutter. It's nothing I was anxiously awaiting and I, I can't see me using the new beep sound. Weird. There's a few other bug fixes. Great to see Nikon on top of those. I do hope we see some of these features added to the Z8 as well. And I'm not opposed to cross-pollination either to see some of the Z8's features. Skin smoothing, <laughs> maybe. Please, I really need this added to the the Z9. I'll tell you why in a moment, if it's not already obvious. I've been enjoying the Z8 as a B camera and as a lightweight alternative to the Z9 in some cases as well. Sometimes I'll carry the Z8 backed up with the Z6 and of course the excellent Z lenses are wonderful. They're really gold on any of the Z cameras. I have been tied up with a number of obligations lately, everything from medical appointments, one of which uh, removed the most protuberant part of my <laughs> proboscis. I always wanted a nose job, but I hadn't planned on too much sun exposure, making it an actual requirement. I've also been tied up with uh, more pressing photo and video assignments. And the next thing you know, um, I haven't shared anything here for at least a couple of weeks. I hope to get things under control by the end of the summer. Though it's been summer here for actually uh, at least a couple of months, as the tinder dry conditions in our Canadian forests prove. Here in British Columbia, we've already had a record fire season, and we're not even through June yet, which we actually used to call June-vember. Well, if there's any upside, I've had no use for the rain protection that I generally carry on location. Mind you, after all the heat, there's actually warnings tonight of wet snow on the mountain passes. It's the new abnormal. There's also been a whole lot of other obligations to take care of um, here recently. Hiring and directing contractors for maintenance of the uh, back 40. As I said, not quite the Hilmer Ranch, but uh, it's still a lot to take care of. House painting, all demanding of our time, and finances. We hope at some point in the not too distant future to get away for some R&R and a change of scenery to um, inspire photography. I hope you'll stop by again to check that out. If you found this video interesting and 
informative, please do give it the old thumbs up. And if this is your first visit to my channel, please do consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell to be alerted to new content. In the meantime, take care, cheers, and we'll see you later.